So, I acquired the bikes today. The, um, the 415 Fat Boy that I picked up is, I want to say, like, first gen. Because it's full chrome molly. But for some, some odd reason, it's got three-eighths axles. But, nothing a grinder can't fix. I mean, the dropouts on them old bikes are huge. Uh, I could put a goddamn one-inch axle on there and I'd still have dropout for it. Uh, that would be overkill. But, I could do it. So, I got two options. I could do what Dance Comp says you can't do. And get... Uh, 14 millimeter axles and um, uh, modify the uh, three eighths hubs, but it's got a 16 tooth free wheel on the back. So I'm kind of like, mm. so worst case scenario, I might end up. Uh, uh, using a cassette for the rear. I got two on order right now at the bike shop. I actually have two cranks too. Um, oh, it should be coming in next week. The front hub, I wouldn't mind converting that over to a 14 millimeter. I mean, all I have to do is just basically get out a micrometer. It's like Dan's comp when when you're looking at their their um, their axle replacements, they say like multiple times, uh, "You cannot upgrade a three eighths axle hub to a fourteen millimeter." Bullshit. What you don't think fucking micrometers exist, or or the fact that bearings come in multiple sizes? dumb fucks and, and besides the point the 14 millimeter uh bearing that's on a 14 millimeter hub outside diameter of that bearing same fucking size as the three eighths dan's comp go fuck yourself deuce because you're fucking idiots Freaking, uh, it don't take a rocket scientist to fucking micrometer some shit. Then you just call up your local di bearing distributor and you fucking get medium speed bearings. Like eight pack fours. That's all you need. Make it sound like it's some sort of NASA shit. Dumbasses. But... That, that baby blue 415 fat boy is going to be on the road uh, probably about uh, next week, maybe the week after. I don't know. Um, I have enough parts between three spare bikes that I can actually build that bike up. It's either that or I, I basically do the... Um, uh, the other fat boy. But that's like... That's a, a true blue fat boy. This is a baby blue fat boy. It looks dope. It looks... I mean, for for 2000s, like... That's eh, a cool color. And honestly, if you saw it from about a quarter mile away, you'd know it was a fat boy because... The majority of the fat boys that were out there were in baby blue. So, it it's just going to pain me to actually get out the grinder and actually, like, uh, cut this bitch to uh, 14 millimeter. It's easy if you take your time. All you got to do is you put a 14 millimeter axle over the fucking 3 eighths fucking dropout and then just trace around it. It'll be balanced. You cut this much off on that side. Cut this much off on that side. Boom. Done. 
fork. It's pretty much got a, uh, it had one of those, uh, hat washers set setups on, on the, uh, three eighths. So if I'm correct, that hat washer was set up to be a, uh, 14 millimeter. So all I technically have to do is straight cut out the little tangs of the entrance of the three eighths. And then the fork will be basically like, um, you know, ready for a 14 millimeter. Now you ask me, why the fuck would I put a 14 millimeter on the front? It's a mid school bike kids. Need 14 millimeter in front. Just, just what you do. Now it kind of blasts me because of the fact that I'm putting a freaking modern cassette on the rear, but it, it the only other option to that is basically immediately go out and buy profile fucking hubs in 48 and um and use those money's not rolling in too fast right now so basically i can't go out and fucking like the last time i priced it together to uh profile kit a bike out it ended up going to be and this is basically no titanium and when and it, it's profile so i can't go the bottom line parts it basically like they're steel parts i'm i'm saying um and not their you know fucking pro fucking crazy ass fucking cranks but basically profile parts their base production models i mean it would be a mini so don't it, it, it'd be nice it's not it's not going to be uh the whatever the fucking their is it the pro hub I, I can't remember what it's called the one that actually has a six paw on it instead of a fucking uh four paw um but doesn't really matter to me the pro only makes more noise i don't really give a fuck about noise noise to me is basically the same thing as jet fuel fucking parts <laughs> fuck both of them um but I think it ended up being around like four fifty five hundred dollars through profile. Um, and like I always basically like told my bike shop straight up, like you know, I'll just order them through you guys. If you guys like fucking make a cut on it, you make a cut on it. I was gonna pay for shipping anyways. Duh. <laughs> and you know. Fucking most of these companies now are basically based like almost in every single state in the United States anyways. So their profile, even if I bought it from their fucking website, they're probably going to charge me tax anyways. So might as well pay the local tax. Boom. So. Yeah, if you have a bike shop, support your fucking bike shop. BMX stores are becoming a dying breed. Everybody wants to mail order their shit. And then they cry because of the fact that, well, I broke apart this, this last weekend when I was riding, but I'm not going to be able to ride for two weeks because I can't get a part in. Well, should have went to the fucking bike shop in the first place and, you know, bought a couple items and kept the lights on. Stupid fucks. Plus, man... When the bike shop starts loving you, you get free t-shirts and all sorts of other free, but, you know, free bunches and stuff. Like, I'm practically goddamn sponsored by my damn bike shop. They take care of me. And I haven't even spent a G there yet. But getting close. Getting real fucking close. Every single time I walk in there, they know it's like 350 bucks out of my pocket. But, um... Yeah, and the other thing is basically, like... Um, most of the time with the small, like mom and pop fucking bike shops, they make you pay, uh, either all up front or a percentage up front. These guys don't even make pay a dime. They're like, nah, Mike, we got you fucking, we're going to order the shit out. And it's not like I told them, like, I want, I want the goddamn titanium cranks and, and the titanium this and the titanium nuts and the, and the accessories and, and, and you no, know, I'm, I'm buying basic ass shit. Going to get these fucking bikes rolling. 
and find out which one has the better geometry because I'm not buying a new bike. I mean, I'm, I'm building a new bike in, in the near future, but that's a slow process because it, it's not like putting a bike together to get it on the road. Putting a bike together on to get it on the road is like you just budget it. You just throw cheap ass shit at it and get it on the fucking road. Find out what you don't like about it and you change it. The um the the new bike that I'm building though, that one's that one's basically like I'm putting all the parts on it that I want to put on it from day one. So it's 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 very expensive and it's taking a long time. I'll probably have that one ready for freaking spring. I'm hoping to God I'll have five bikes ready for spring because of the fact that basically um, Spokane's going to have that that uh, uh, Lakeview Park fucking, I don't know, uh, river, Riverfront? I don't know, whatever. Fucking look it up on the internet. It's called like uh, the Wheels Park or some shit in Spokane. Um, yeah, and if you actually see the model that they actually have on their webpage, fucking wall ride heaven. They, like, got wall rides all over the fucking place. If you like wall rides, you better fucking hop in your car with your goddamn bike and come up here on opening day in goddamn fucking spring because that park is going to be badass. I mean, like, it's really rare to actually see parks that actually have wall rides. I mean, parks have walls sometimes, but the, they don't ever have transitions so you can get up on the walls and then get back off the walls without doing some crazy ass shit that if you fucking, you know, fuck up, you're going to land on your side or on your head. Um, their wall rides are actually pretty safe. There's only like one or two of them that basically like you have a one foot kick out that you have to basically jump over to get back on, on the quarter. So, I mean, yeah, five bikes ready for that because all these younger guys, they don't realize basically like, that was the epitome of fucking mid-school. Like, before mid-school, you guys had freestyle and quarter pipes, and you guys were touching into half pipes. Yeah. Mid-school came around, that's when we started riding street, and riding, like, street parks. Not skate parks called street parks because of the fact that basically like um there was features in there that basically were kind of really scary and well just to look at before you did them yeah you, you really had to psych yourself to doing them and then basically once you you got past that and you actually did it the first time you're like well it was pretty fucking simple um quarter into a box jump it's just basically like or or, or an overhead bent or that yeah, overhead box um that was probably one of my funnest things that i used to always do and when i was at the park i'd always basically walk the younger guys in on how to do it because all you have to do is get speed and what i used to always tell them is basically uh if you overshoot it you're just going to land on that upper deck and if you undershoot it, you're just going to land on the lower deck. And, you know, everybody's always like, yeah, but it's like a fucking three foot drop, you know. And that was like a small one. They they, they had a, at, at one of the B3s, they, they had a, a six foot quarter that went into um, a lower deck. And then behind that lower deck went up five more feet. And then there was another fucking deck up there. Um. Pardon me if I don't know what the fuck to call it, but I'd always, I always called it basically a box transition over a quarter because of the fact that basically you're trying to land on the upper ledge of, a, of the other box. And it's like, kind of like they built a quarter and they put a box on, on the backside of the quarter. Um, wall rides, wall rides are fucking dope. Um, if you get really good at them and the park has an actual you know full tilt boogie freaking 20 foot wall ride or wall vert um they're really really fun especially if they're in a safe system with uh um, you know like at least a minimum of a six foot roll in quarter because of the fact that basically you can just full steam boogie going into it and 
basically like between you and your buddies all damn day long, you just see how high you can go. Because it takes a lot of steam to actually like go up 20 feet on a wall. And, you know, when you get to your mark, you just fucking hit that back brake. If you got a back brake. If you don't, just drag your fucking foot. You know, them, 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 them skate park shoes that your mama bought you. But yeah, so, um, tomorrow I am going to go back into storage where I, I dropped off all the bikes and, uh, I picked up some, um, uh, Goo Gone or whatever the hell it's called. And I'm going to basically like, you know, do a wipe down of both frames and the 415 fat boy that I bought today doesn't need any of it. The only issue that I have with that frame is whoever owned it, they didn't give a fuck about it and it's all chipped up all over the fucking place. All the stickers are intact though. Fucking gorgeous bike. Other than the fact that it's all chipped up. It's like, I get it though. It wasn't an iconic bike until basically just recently. And it's not iconic because I'm calling it iconic. The thing is, is basically like, uh, this would be like the last thing before I fucking end the video. GT prices and Haro prices are through the fucking roof. GT prices are through the roof so high right now that dyno prices are actually going up. You know, the boo-boo ass version of GT. Um, Haro and any business or bike name that was affiliated with Haro is also on the coattails of Haro's bike prices going up right now for the used market. And basically right now, everybody is kind of like understanding that certain models of GT and Haro are untouchable and all the other ones you really don't want to fucking ride anyways. Because, like, with GT, all you had was Pro Freestyle Tour and the Performer and maybe a Dino Air. Uh, the early gens, not the fucking later ones that you could buy at the sporting goods store or fucking Walmart. I don't know if you can buy them at Walmart. But I'm just saying, like, they got really shitty. The fucking, if, if you're in the, the market for a fucking Dino or some shit, stay the fuck away from the dual fucking slope, the top tube and, and, and bottom tube. If it's got bends in the tube, I mean, not, not, I'm not talking the GT Pro Freestyle Tour bend. I'm talking like, it's like, it's got a really long rake kind of bend in it because they wanted to make it look flowy. Yeah. Stay the fuck away from that frame. That's a shit frame. GT should have never fucking made it. I mean, Dino, but GT makes it, so... Eh. Freaking, um... Haros. Like, they're... 540? 540 air? Like, you want to try and find one of those right now? That's the most rideable bike that you can buy currently that is in the used market for technically vintage. Um, and I want to say... Um, GT Pro Freestyle Tour wins the cake for, um, old school into the early, early days of, of mid school. I don't consider a mid school though. Um, because it was more of a flat landy fucking quarter pipe fucking deal. It wasn't a half pipe bike, but the, uh, Haro 540, that was mid school. That, that bike right there, like, basically, like, I could get on it, and I could fucking go to town on that bike. But these motherfuckers are buying them damn things up for, like, fucking thousands of dollars in, in halfway decent shape. I mean, hey, there's an ass for every seat. But they're not riding them. They're putting them up on the fucking wall. In the garage or their man cave. We're like, yeah, man, glory days, woo. But they'll never ride them. Like, why, why the fuck are you buying the damn thing? That's why, like, people can't afford sports cars and shit. Because assholes are buying them up because of the fact that, you know, like, they're collecting them. It's like, fuck collectors. If you're a collector, go fuck yourself. Goddamn fucking hoarder.
Like, whatever you buy, you use. The same thing goes for hunting. Whatever you hunt, you eat. If you're in that, that, that fishing game where you want to fucking get that fish fight and straddle a goddamn hook through a fucking fish's mouth and then basically fight his ass for 35 fucking minutes, taking, like, the last goddamn, you know, piece of energy out of that fish and then finally get him up on the deck of your boat and then pull the fucking hook out of his fucking face in, in a, not even a nice kind of manner and just fucking stick your finger down his throat and basically... Oh, yeah, fucking big-ass bass, look at this bitch, and then fucking just chuck it back in the fucking water. Dude, that fish is going to die, you dumb fuck. Same thing with everything. Don't be a hoarder. Some of us people actually want to fucking ride. Goddamn status symbols and shit. Your fucking dumb-ass memories and crap. Fuck you, people.